This word by itself is just a letter, but when the Spirit of the living God activates this word, storms will turn around, sicknesses will have to leave, battles will have to disappear. When the Word of God, when the Word of God comes and meets with this word, when the Spirit of God meets with this word, things have to turn around, things have to change, things are different. And in Matthew 18, 19, I want to preach this in the balance day. I feel like we're going to get help today. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that it shall ask and it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For for two or three are gathered together in my name there am I in the midst of them I looked up the word degree the original Greek is 4859 it's to be in harmony to, to, to be in one accord to be suitable of the same mind of the same opinion Webster says to see eye to eye to be united to be as one man one accord to acknowledge to admit to, to grant permission I the, Brother Dale, people here that can tell you everything about wires. I know little, but it, it does interest me. You can take this, you can take this little wire right here, this one one small wire right here, and it will carry a doorbell. And it, and, it, and it's probably it's probably a, a, a I don't know a, a eighteen gauge or, or twenty gauge. But then then you can come and you can get this fourteen, and you can carry a light switch. But then you could take it, take it apart, melt it, put it together, and have a 12, have a 12 2 wire. You have a 12 2 wire, it's no longer it'll just carry a light switch, it'll, it'll carry a receptacle. Where this one alone would just barely carry a doorbell or maybe a, 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 a six volt light, you get two of them together. Hallelujah. And, you, and they become one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they become one. But then you take these and you twist them together. And it's no longer a, a, a 12 gauge. You could bump it on up and it becomes a 10 gauge. And when it becomes a 10 gauge, then you no, are no longer limited just to run a light switch. You are no longer limited just to, just to work a toaster and, and bake a piece of toast. Then, then, then you melt these together and, and you come up, you can go, we go all the way down to, to, a, to a four gauge or a, a six gauge. And now we have the capacity to run a hot water heater. Then, then we add to it and we have the capacity to run an air conditioner. But, but, when, but by itself, it's alone. And the devil would like to to single you out and make you feel like you're alone. I'm going to get real personal today. I'm going to be a father and a pastor in here. Everybody in here is not married to a Sheila Wynn. I think of the years how God's blessed our home because Sheila's been so agreement with me. I remember we were evangelizing. I've only told this story twice. We were evangelizing and, and we, we, were, we preached in Texas and we had a meeting scheduled in Washington D.C. and the Lord said I'm going to bless you on this trip. I've never, you never hear me talk much about money. we we just, we've always carried a heavy load and God's been kind to us. I get up there and I just leave with enough gas money, but I knew God had talked, spoke to me. I get back home and a man calls me, said my world was over, my family fell apart. Said in that little meeting, said that wasn't even my church. I visited, God turned my life around. He said, I own a piece of property in Athens. And he said, all you got to pay is a $50 uh, a lawyer fee. Said everything's took care of. I'll give it to you and Sheila. Do what you want to with it. So we come home and we start working on this little old rental house and we put about a thousand in it. We realize we, we've got $22,000 house here we can sell. We live in our little mobile home. We're going to build us a house. So we're getting all excited and we're making plans. We're going to build us a house. I, I'm on a fast at this time. Sheila wants to pray. Sheila comes back from praying and crying. She comes back with tears running down her face and I come back and I thought, Lord, how am I going to tell Sheila what you just spoke to me? While I was in Texas six months before I was on a fast and I said, Lord, uh, Daddy's pastor in that little church there. I may be there someday, but this time crowd small, they, they owe 20 some thousand and God if you'd bless me I'd pay that building off. She looked, walked out there, she said honey we don't get to build a house now and I didn't tell her the Lord spoke to me. I said what do you mean? She said the Lord spoke to me. We weren't praying the Lord bless us and we'd build a house we said if the Lord blessed us we would we'd pay that church off. Hallelujah. I didn't have to have a wife mad at me to obey God. I didn't have to have a wife upset at me. I didn't have to have a wife disappointed in me. I didn't have to have a wife pulling against me all of my life. God has blessed Anthony Wynn. I am what I am today by the grace
grace of God and because I have married a woman that stood in agreement with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we give, when we couldn't afford to give, Sheila has stood in agreement with me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the devil a black eye. Everybody in here is not married to a Sheila Wynn. It's hard to agree when you're married to a drunk. It's hard to agree. Don't, don't edit this out. Let it go on TV. It's hard to agree when you're married to a drug addict. But I'm shooting the devil in the face and I'm telling him that little woman's not alone. That little man's not alone. That wife may not agree with you and that husband may not agree with you. But you got a pastor and you got about 300 church family around you and if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. I'm coming out to that spirit that wants to desolate you. I'm coming against that spirit that wants to make you feel rejected and forgot about. Hallelujah. I'm telling you there's power in agreement. There's power what this little wire cannot accomplish by itself if it will unite with these. Hallelujah. This is why people don't want to unite. They lose their identity. They lose their pats on the back. They lose who they are. But it's not important who I am. It's important who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't heal a cancer but if I can submit myself to God and we can surrender to God and we can let the anointing flow through us they can be an anointed fall in this house and the cancer has to dry up and heart rhythms have to come hallelujah hallelujah somebody ought to give him a praise in this house somebody ought to give him a praise in this house let everything that hath breath praise the Lord praise you the Lord and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were seated they were all with one accord in one place and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire and it set upon each of them they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance in the book of Leviticus 26 and 6 and I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid and I will rid evil beasts out of the land neither shall the sword go through your land and you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword and five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand I like that multiplication there hallelujah how can I read it again and five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword hallelujah well brother Wynn I don't feel anything but I do hallelujah and if you can find somebody that's got a word from the Lord and come into agreement with them hallelujah if you can find somebody who's heard from the Lord enemies all around Gideon's been living in a cave he's hid he's terrified he's afraid but all of us Sutton, I, I like this. His word didn't come from a prophet. His word didn't come from a bishop. His word came from somebody that hated him. Hallelujah. Sometimes the Lord will let the enemy tell you, if God's for you, who can be against you? Sometimes the Lord will let the enemy tell you, God's going to finish what he started. God's going to make a way. God's going to raise up a standard. And the Lord sent Gideon down to hear what the enemy's saying, and he's telling about a dream he had. Hallelujah. In the book of, of Judges 7 and 16, and he divided divided the 300 men into three companies and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and harps within were the pitchers and he said unto them look on me and do likewise and behold when I come to the outside of the camp it shall be that as I do ye shall do and when I blow a trumpet I and all that are with me then blow you the trumpet also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle a watch and when they had but newly set the watch they blew the trumpet and they break the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps to their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand to blow with all and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the hosts ran and cried and fleed hallelujah Hey friends, this is Pastor Anthony Wynn here at Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle in Athens, Tennessee, Oasis TV Ministry. I remember going into a business and the young man told me, he said, Brother Wynn, I don't have no desire for God, no desire for church. He said, but I've been watching your program. And he said, the reason I've been watching it is you say so little about finances. 
And he said, it's got my attention. Well, six months later, went in and he said, hey, I've got saved. A year later, he went in. He said, I'm, I'm in church all the time now. And now he's teaching Sunday school. And we talked the other day, it's just because he started watching the program. So I try hard, I try hard. We carry a heavy financial load. The ministry just, just God's been kind. We just took on a large station in Florida, the super station. We're, we're on many stations now and we're in 48 nations and, and God has been kind to us, but I have a burden is sure to reach further and to reach further. It's going to take more funds. And some of you out there that if, if God has touched your heart or your life, encourage you through this ministry, would you pray about partnering with us here at Oasis ministry? Never want to be a burden to you. Never want to put our, our pressure on you, but would you pray about holding our hands up so that we can reach further, lengthen our cords, expand our stakes and just Tell more folk that Jesus still saves, he heals, and he delivers. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. Pray for us. We love you. If we can do anything to pray with you, encourage you, or help you, get the numbers on the screen. Let us know. God bless you. Now you hear me out. We're not going to edit this. I want this on TV. I am not telling you. Anthony Wynn is not telling you to go home and flush your medicine. Anthony Wynn is not telling you to go home and quit taking your medicine. Anthony Wynn is telling you to go home and look in that medicine cabinet and say, Mr. Medicine, you are not my final report. You are not my final report. Hallelujah. This day, this day, I'm taking this case back to the Lord. This day, I'm bringing this situation back to the Lord. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but there's men and women you have accepted where you are and you have told yourself this is just the way it's going to be. But God sent a little old country preacher in this room to tell somebody hallelujah, that may be the way it used to be, but that don't be the way it has to be. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he still saves, he still heals, and he still delivers. And there's still a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. The blood reaches from the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley and the blood will never, 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 never lose its power. The blood will never, never, never lose its power. The blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. I feel a little bit. I feel a little bit what I felt that camp meeting died. I hadn't talked to my sister that day. I, I didn't know anything that was going on that day. I knew that she was in a hard place. And I knew the doctor back in Ju June had, had stopped her medicine. And she had been to the doctor that morning. And that doctor told her, Sheila, it's not working. Just just weeks, not very long days. It's, it's Everything is over. You just get ready. There's nothing else we can do. It's just it's just a short time. Not, not months or weeks just a short time and I came to the pulpit that night and I began to preach and I feel what I feel now and my sister never liked to grow plants she never did good at a garden but I told her I said Sheila I feel the anointing I don't know everything God's going to do but I feel the anointing telling you you're going to plant a tomato plant and you're going to take care of it and you're going to harvest it hallelujah and son you went and bought her a tomato plant hallelujah and a little old girl that never did do good with plants let me show you the picture someday that plant got about this tall tomatoes grew all over it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God give her about seven more wonderful months. Hallelujah. I feel that type of anointing in here. I feel that type of anointing in here. If somebody will come into agreement. If somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to praise him out loud. Somebody ought to praise him out loud. It may be a lost child. It may be a lost daughter. It may be you're about to fall back. It may be a storm. Hallelujah. But you don't have to carry this by yourself anymore. God's wanting to tell some people the devil wants to disillate you, make you feel alone, but there's power in unity. There's strength in unity. There's power when God's people come together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God's, when God's people come together. When God's people come together. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 32 20. How shall one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to wave this in the devil's face. He saw a third of the stars fall or a third of the angels. But devil, every one you took down to remain. Hallelujah. That means every time a de demon attacks me, I got two angels fighting for me. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him out loud. There's power in unity. There's power in unity. Esther. Queen Esther, there's death in the land. And on a certain day, 
on a certain day, there's going to be a decree made. And all the Jews are going to be eradicated. They're going to be killed. They're going to be eliminated, destroyed. And the little Mordecai, hallelujah, little old Mordecai, though I laying in the gate fasting and praying, they said, if I can just get some agreement. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I, this, this is fresh from heaven right now. Sometimes you've got to find the one who can make the connection to bring agreement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A little old 20 or 18 gauge might run a doorbell, but if you're needing to, if you're needing to run a heater, you're going to have to have about 20 of them. Start tying them together and bind them together. Remail them and stretch them out again. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody this? And I know it's not proper preaching in this age of pride and all the stuff going on, but if we want to move with God, we got to lose our identity. He can't be about Anthony Wynn. It can't be about he preached the message and he lay him. It's going to be about, hallelujah, Christ's work through miracle, delivered tabernacle, and the blinded eyes was opened and devils was cast out. Hallelujah. And the lame walked. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to reach for him right now. The power of agreement when we lose our identity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I never walk to a parking lot and step across a penny. One penny won't do much, but if I can find ten, I got to die. Then if I can find 25, I've got a quarter. And that little penny loses its identity. No, we're going to get some, some, some flack back from this, but I'm going to keep preaching. Some of these little old folks would rather be a penny and look at me and be a penny than lose their identity and be a part of a real kingdom, be a part of a move of God that will touch this generation and touch the world. we got to lose our identity that Christ might be glorified. we got to lose our identity. Hallelujah, that Christ might be exalted. we got to lose our identity. Hallelujah. In the book of Esther, she said, Go gather all the Jews that are present and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, day or night. I'll so in my maiden will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king. It's not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and he did according to all that Esther had commanded. Hallelujah. And when that, when, that, when that nation comes together as a corporate like we did in January and they begin to fast and pull the time that little girl, that little queen walked up that quarter hall and oppressed that king. God melted his heart. He holds out that golden scepter. He says, Queen, what do you want? My little bride, what do you want? Hallelujah. I believe if we'll pull together and then you'll take that petition down the quarter hall of prayer and you'll walk into the presence of King Jesus I believe he'll stand up like he did for Stephen say what do you want hallelujah you want deliverance in your home you want healing you want your light bill paid you want food on your table you want your chill hallelujah what do you want what do you want what do you want can I ask somebody what is your need in here what is your need what do you need what is it you need what is it you need what is your need? What is your request? What is your need? What is your need? What is your need? Hallelujah. I'm not being mean, but would you bow your head and would you close your eyes? And would you allow yourself just for five seconds to think of all the things you've accepted? And that you've accepted turmoil in your mind, trouble in your home, sickness in your body, lost love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always struggling, just barely getting by. You've, you've accepted these. Hallelujah. When there's a father right there, and he's a good, good father, and he wants to walk into your situation and he wants to make a way hallelujah but the enemies wore you out and you need somebody to come into agreement with you hallelujah hallelujah that'll stand on this word that'll get in this word and pray and fast till we get a divine personal word from heaven the power of agreement enemies everywhere Saul and his army don't know what to do 1 Samuel 14 and 6 and Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised it may be the Lord will work for us for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few hallelujah this is who I'm looking for I'm looking for you daughter sir I'm looking for you I'm looking for somebody that's going to grab me after church hallelujah and his armor bearer said on him do all that is in thy heart turn thee behold I am with thee according to thy heart hallelujah I feel 
I've heard from the Lord. Hallelujah. There's needs in here. There's needs in here. There's needs in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, you, you get one or two people build a house and take a few weeks. I've seen Amish show up to build houses. Seen pictures of it. Two or four days that thing's over. Some stuff you've been praying about. If you'd start sharing your request with this church with some people you can trust. Don't share it with somebody that's going to place it on Facebook. Don't share it with somebody that's just going to doubt and puff up. But if you can find you somebody that believes in this word. If you can find you somebody that prays. If you can find somebody that's got a relationship with God. If you can find somebody that believes that he still saves, he still heals, and he still delivers. Nothing's impossible to him that believes. Nothing's impossible. 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 impossible. Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Do you have a need? I'm going to be a pastor for the next few minutes. Do you have a need? The widow woman only had enough meal for one last meal. She and her son, they're going to eat it and they're going to die. Is somebody you feel like you're at the end of your road? Does somebody feel like weeks ago you tied a knot and you're just about to slide past that knot? Hey, this is Michael Wynn with Oasis Ministries. I'm Pastor Anthony Wynn's son. For the last year, we have been paying for all the food and clothing of an orphanage in Haiti. And we felt drawn that we wanted to do more. So me and Pastor, we flew all the way down there and we went and stayed a week with these children. Uh, and we've, we've saw a great need. Electricity in Haiti isn't like electricity here. It comes and it goes and the price is just ridiculous. So then on top of that, they wanted tens of thousands to potentially hundreds of thousands to run it out to the orphanage. So they set up and then first they were like, we'll just use a generator. And then the fuel prices kept skyrocketing and skyrocketing to the point now there is no fuel accessible. So we got the burden to get these children solar. So we started calling around. We started talking to our friends. We started praying and we raised $50,000 to put a solar plant on this uh, orphanage. And if that isn't God, I don't know what is. Once a week, they've been bringing a doctor in for the children of the orphanage. And we saw that this has helped them. It's brought them out of sicknesses. It's brought them out of so many different things. But they felt called to do more. So they're wanting to build a little doctor's office right on the edge of the property for the local people of Mirabale. And would you consider donating and be a part of this to make a difference in someone's life? It's amazing just the few minutes meeting with a skilled and trained doctor, how it can help these people with common sicknesses that could be easily fixed. So if, you, if you're unable to donate, pray with us that we can make this possible. And if you are, the contact information is on the screen. Get a hold of us um, and let us know. Thank you. God bless. He thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth Look down at your hand Look at something he thought was worth something. Lead me up inside. You thought I was to die for. I don't know why, but you sacrificed your life so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell it.
Hey friends, hope you've enjoyed this program. I would like to speak to anybody that don't know where you are with the Lord. One of my favorite ways to witness to people right now say, how are you and Jesus doing? I want to ask somebody, how are you and Jesus doing? One song says, I've wandered far away from God, but I want to come home. I want to return back to the Lord. Young man told me just a few days ago, he said, I don't know how to get back up. I don't know how to come back. God sent this little preacher into your life right now. I, I want to reach for you, friend. He's not mad at you. He's not forgot you. He's not thrown you away. And you've not went too far. You've not been cut off. You've just, you've just been in a lost place. You've been in a forgotten place. And I feel the Lord drawing and pulling on somebody right now. I, want, I wish you'd pray this prayer with me. Lord, you said in your words, you said in that holy Bible, that you was faithful and just, that if we would repent of our sins, that if we would say, Lord, I, I, I'm a sinner, I've lost, I've hurt you, I've failed you, I have sinned. You said if we would repent of our sins, Lord, and I feel the Lord drawing somebody now. You said if we'd confess our sins and we repent. Lord, we confess our sins. We need you. We're lost without you. Forgive us our sins. And Lord, please come into our life. Be the Lord of our life. We'll surrender all. We'll live for you. We'll find us a good Bible-believing church. We'll find us some believers that, that love Jesus, Lord. And we'll, we'll turn, if you'll help us and turn our life around, we'll live for you till our dying days. We'll do our best to please you, to seek the Holy Ghost, to stay in church, to read that Bible, to, to serve you and please you in all, all of our ways. Would you grant this prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Friends, you've prayed with us. You've made a start. If you'd contact us here, we'd give you some books or CDs, DVDs, information. We'll pray with you. We'll continue to pray with you. This is Brother Wynn. You've made a start on a journey to heaven. You're our family now. Welcome home. God bless you. Thank you. While you're here now, just link to us, like us, subscribe, and let us know more content you'd like to hear about the family, about we're going to be doing different podcasts, different things, and we want to be part of your life. We want to find what you're hurting over, what would help you, encourage you. So while you're here now, go ahead and just click it, subscribe. We love you. Please pray for us. This is Brother Wynn telling you Jesus really cares about you. Thank you. God bless you.